This is an introduction to optimization in Python using numerical methods. We're going to be talking about how to define an objective, parameters, variables, equality constraints, and also inequality constraints. And we're going to start with just a definition of a, an optimization problem. We're going to minimize something. Okay, it's going to be an objective function. I'll just say that's f of x subject to, and then we're going to have equality constraints g of x equals zero and then h of x is greater than zero now for linear programming problems this simplifies just a little bit more so i'm going to write this down it's going to be minimized i'm going to have a vector c times my vector x of decision variables so these are the ones that are the decision variables that the optimizer can choose to try to minimize an objective function Okay, and then we're going to be subject to, and I'll just write it in matrix form, A1 times X equals B1. That's my equality constraint. And then I could also have A2 times X and gr is greater than B2. So that's my inequality constraint. So let's just solve a simple problem just to demonstrate this. So we're going to have an... Um, an objective that's going to be minimize a 0.5 times x1 plus 0.8 times x2 plus 0.7 times x3 and then we're going to be subject to and this one is going to have an equality constraint and an inequality constraint so just for the sake of simplicity here I'm going to add up x1 plus x2 plus x3, and that is going to be equal to 5. And then we're going to have x2 plus x3 is going to be greater than, uh, well, actually, let's make this less than 4. Okay, less than or equal to um, is equivalent when we're dealing with numerical values. Okay, so here's our optimization problem right here that we want to solve so let's go ahead and set this up and solve it in python and then we'll move on to one that's uh, just a similar linear programming problem where we're going to solve this one as well we're, we'll maximize x plus y okay subject to those constraints we'll do that one next but let's go ahead and do this simple one right here first okay so let me go ahead and just move this out of the way here and then let's go and start up a Jupyter notebook and I'll just start this up um, okay on my desktop and then create a new Python 3 Jupyter notebook here okay so the very first thing that I'm going to do with this is uh, go ahead and just install a package called gecko okay so that's going to be pip install gecko you only need to run this once and then after you run it then you can comment it out and if it just installed then just come here to kernel and restart okay so the next thing we're going to do is just go ahead and define our model and import gecko so I'll insert a cell so I'll say from gecko import gecko and then I'll create a new model of gecko okay and then I'll go ahead and run that cell so no now I've created my model M and now I'm going to define some variables like x1 is going to be a variable all right, x2 will also be a variable, and then x3 will be a variable. All right, so I've defined my three variables, and then let's go ahead and just define my equations now. Okay, so my first equation is x1 plus x2 plus x3 equals five. So don't forget the double equal sign there. And then my second equation is going to be x2 plus x3, and that's going to be less than or equal to 4. 
Okay, let's go on to our final one, which is our objective function. And we're going to try to minimize 0 0.5 times x1 plus 0 0.8 times x2 plus and then 0 0.7 times x3. All right, move that over just a little bit so we could see it. Okay, now we want to solve it. And this is going to put out a lot of the solver output to the screen. The main thing that you want to do when you solve this is come down here to the bottom. If it's solved it and just look for, oh, it looks like the iter it's diverging. Okay, problem might be unbounded. So let's go ahead and add some bounds to this one. Okay, so I'm going to say that lower bound equals zero and upper bound equals two for each of these. So that's where I can search for a solution. Otherwise, when I try to minimize this, all of these will go to negative infinity. Okay, or, um, well, not all of them, but um, it'll try to send some of them to negative infinity. Okay, so I'll go ahead and rerun that again. Um, go ahead and rerun my objective function and then solve it. Okay, and it looks like, again, I have a, a, a problem. Let me go ahead and just restart and run all. Okay, there it goes. It just was holding on to some of those values from before. Okay, so when I restarted it, you can see the optimal solution is found and it gives me an objective function. So if I don't wanna see all of that output, I'll say display equals false. And then I can create a new line below that just prints the solution. Okay, there's X1 and I can put X2 and X3 there as well. Okay, so those are my values. And then I can also print my objective function value. And that is M options, objective function value. All right, so there's my objective. And then there are my three variables right there. Okay, so that's a very simple problem definition using Gecko. We just imported the model, defined some variables, defined some equations, equality or inequality. There's a minimization. I solve it, and then there is my final solution. So you can also condense this down a little bit. I'll just show one way to do that. Okay, I have my three x values. I can say array, and let's create three values. All of them have lower bound zero and upper bound of two. Okay, so that's a condensed way of doing this. Also, you can say equations instead, and then define those as a list of equations. Okay, so it simplified it down just a little bit. I'll go ahead and throw this objective function definition in here as well condense it into just one cell. Okay, so I'm just restarting it and running all of it. So there's my condensed definition of the problem. And you can see here, it's very similar to what I had here. I just defined three variables, had my two constraints as well. All right, so let's, uh, let's solve this other one as well. We had one more that was listed here. And this is also gonna be one of the exercises that will run in the next, um, the next part where we also talk about not just linear programming problems, but we also talk about some quadratic programming, nonlinear programming, uh, mixed integer and mixed integer nonlinear programming as well. So that's gonna be coming up in this next, um, let's bring that up and show that to you, ME575. 
And here, if you just come on the side under, this is optimization basics. So that's what we're covering right here with this simple problem. And then the next one is going to be optimized with Python. And that's gonna cover all of these different ones. It's gonna give examples for linear, quadratic, nonlinear, mixed integer linear, mixed integer nonlinear programming as well. But let's go back here and just solve this other one. So see if you can do it yourself and then pause the video and go on um, and check your work if you need to. So try to solve this one over here on the left uh, with this uh, minimization problem that you see right here. Actually, it's, I guess it's a maximization problem. Okay, we're maximizing x plus y. Okay, so go ahead and pause and try it yourself. All right, well, let's uh, go through this together. Um, we're gonna first of all just say that we have x and y and we only have two values there um, and then we're also going to say that we have a lower bound of zero but y is going to have an upper bound as well we'll just change that for the y value okay so y is upper is going to be equal to two okay and x doesn't have an upper bound our equations are going to be six, six times x plus four times y, so less than or equal to 24. Our second one is gonna be x plus two times y is less than or equal to six. And then let's just create a new one here. Minus x plus y is less than or equal to one. And then I already have the other ones listed as simple bounds instead. Now let's go ahead and just change this to maximize. X plus Y. Okay, and then I'll just change this to X value and Y value. And then I can go ahead and delete this X3. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I'll just restart and run all the cells and let's just see the value that it gives me. So it came up with something fairly close to three. It's not exact, these are numerical solutions and then you can see the Y value of 1.5. And then the objective function, because I'm maximizing it, you just put a negative in here because it converts it to a minimization problem when it solves it. And it does that by just multiplying by negative one. So let's just look at our chart over here on the left just to see how it did. And we can visualize this solution because there are only two variables. Normally we can't. Okay, so you can see this, these lines right here, those are the objective function. That one is x plus y. And you can see that uh, those contours, they get larger as we go that way. Now, we see a couple potential solutions. We know in linear programming that the solution is going to be at one of these vertices, the, the intersection of the constraints. And so, like in the simplex method, you just go through and successively evaluate just these intersections to find a solution. Well, we can see that uh, this one right here, the objective is four. This one down here, the objective is also four. But right here, the objective is 4.5. So that's gonna be our best solution. This one over here is three. This one over here is one. And then this one is zero. So if we're trying to maximize, okay, between all these different objective options, the best one is going to be right here. And we can see that with our solution as well. We got an X value of three and a Y value of 1.5. So it was able to find the best solution out of all those potential ones, 
with um, an interior point solver. So the other thing you'll see with this um, as we'll go later on is you can also put in um, you know uh, nonlinear or quadratic terms as well. So I could have something like this. And if I restart and run all, then you'll see it comes up with a different solution. Okay, when I have a different objective function that might be nonlinear instead. Okay, but for this one that was just x plus y, we have a solution uh, right up here. Okay, well, I hope uh, you've enjoyed this optimization introduction. We're going to go on to our next one, as I mentioned, and solve not just linear programming, but quadratic, nonlinear, mixed integer, and mixed integer, nonlinear.